Summary of the Fault in Our Stars by John Green Hazel Grace Lancaster is 17 years old, and she has cancer. Hazel goes to a cancer support group in the basement of a church because her mother thinks she is sad and wants her to. Hazel doesn't like the support group, but she goes because she wants to make her mom happy. But one day, when Hazel goes to the support group, she is happy to see a lovely new boy there. During the talk, everyone says their names, and Hazel finds out that the boy's name is Augustus Waters. Augustus lost one of his legs to osteosarcoma, a type of cancer, but the cancer is now gone. He is there to help his friend Isaac, who has a rare form of eye cancer and has already lost one eye and now needs to have the other eye taken out. August goes up to Hazel after the meeting and tells her she looks like Natalie Portman in the movie V for Vendetta. Hazel doesn't believe him because she carries an oxygen tank and her cancer treatment has made her lips red and puffy, but they continue to kiss. Augustus invites her to watch the movie with him at his house. When Hazel agrees, Augustus takes her to his house and presents her to his parents. Their home is full of things with sayings sewn on them. Hazel tells Augustus while they are hanging out that she has thyroid cancer that has moved to her lungs, but that a new drug that hasn't helped many other people has bought her some time. Before she leaves, Hazel tells him about a book called An Imperial Affliction that she can't get enough of. She says that the book is about a girl who is young and has cancer. She loves the book because it tells the truth about what it's like to die. Hazel thinks it's brilliant that the book stops in the middle of a sentence because it shows how death really is. She tells Augustus that she wants to get in touch with the book's author, Peter Van Houten, to find out what happens next. Augustus agrees to read An Imperial Affliction as long as Hazel reads The Price of Dawn, which is his favorite book. Hazel tells Augustus that they can talk again after she finishes The Price of Dawn. Hazel calls Augustus after reading The Price of Dawn, which is very harsh but also kind of fun. He is trying to make Isaac feel better after his girlfriend Monica broke up with him. Hazel comes over to watch them play video games until Isaac loses it and starts hitting pillows. Augustus tells him to break his basketball awards in the end. Hazel doesn't talk to Augustus for a week after she goes. When Augustus finally calls, they talk about an imperial affliction. Augustus says that he talked to Van Houten through his helper, Lydwidge Vliegenthart, in a casual way. Hazel can't believe he was able to get in touch with the author who lives alone. Augustus tells Hazel about what they talked about and gives her his email address. Hazel starts making a list of questions to ask Van Houten, most of which are about the abrupt way the book ends. She really wants to know what happens to the main character's family after she dies because she thinks it will tell her something about what will happen to her own family after she dies. After she sends Van Houten an email, he responds a few days later to say that he can only answer her questions in person. Hazel is upset by his answer because she thinks she will never be able to visit Van Houten in Amsterdam. Augustus asks Hazel to a walk soon after he hears from Van Houten. As they walk into the park and sit down in front of a big skeleton sculpture, Hazel starts to notice that the lunch has a strange Dutch theme, since the statue was made by a Dutch artist. During the lunch, August says that he wants to take Hazel to Amsterdam with his wish, which is a gift from the Genie Foundation which is like the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Hazel is thrilled to hear this, but she pulls away when Augustus tries to touch her face. She says that she is afraid to get close to people because she feels like a bomb and thinks that her death will hurt everyone who is close to her. Hazel is thinking about what to do about Augustus' offer when she gets sick and has to go to the hospital. She spends a few days in the ICU. She finds out later that Augustus stayed at the hospital the whole time even though she wouldn't let him into the room because she was afraid he would be upset to see her in such a bad way. After Augustus shows her another letter from Van Houten, Hazel is set to go to Amsterdam. Hazel's parents and the group of doctors who take care of her decide that she can't travel such a long way. Dr. Maria, her favorite doctor, finally talks her folks into letting her go. Augustus, Hazel, and Mrs. Lancaster, Hazel's mother, fly to Amsterdam. Hazel finds out when she and Augustus check into their hotel that Lydwidge has made a table for them at a fancy restaurant called Orangey. 
At dinner, they talk about life and death, and Augustus says he's afraid he won't have done anything special before he dies. Hazel doesn't like the idea that only very special lives are worth living. Then Augustus tells Hazel about his ex-girlfriend who died of cancer. He doesn't like how people romanticize kids who die of cancer and explains how his ex-girlfriend's brain cancer changed her attitude and made her more and more mean to Augustus until she died. They go to see Van Houten the next day. Hazel is very happy to finally find out what happens at the end of an imperial affliction. But her hopes are dashed when they learn that Van Houten is an unhappy, mean-spirited drunk. He says he can't give Hazel the answers she's looking for and goes on a rant about how he doesn't care about life or death. He finally insults Hazel by saying that she needs people to feel sorry for her and that, as a cancer survivor, she is a side effect of evolution. Hazel smacks a glass of scotch out of Van Houten's hand and leaves with Augustus. Lidwidge goes with them because he feels bad about how Van Houten acted. They go to the and Frank house together. August and Hazel kiss in the attic of the and Frank house, which surprises Hazel. The other people there cheer for the young pair. They go back to the hotel after leaving the and Frank house. Hazel tells Augustus she loves him in his hotel room, and they make love. The next day, Augustus tells Hazel that his cancer has come back and is now in every part of his body. When Augustus got back to the US, his health kept getting worse. Hazel watches as Augustus goes from being a self-assured, funny, and handsome young man to a scared, broken-down shell of his former self. Even though he is sick, Hazel still loves him and starts calling him Gus instead of Augustus, which is what his parents call him. Hazel sees that Augustus has turned into the bomb she was afraid she would become as he gets worse. In the days before he dies, Augustus plans a funeral service for him in the church basement where they met. Isaac and Hazel both go to the funeral and say nice things about Augustus. Hazel quotes a line from an imperial affliction that says there are an endless number of numbers between 0 and 1, and even more between 0 and 2. She then says that she is thankful for every little bit of time she has been able to spend with Augustus. Augustus dies eight days after the funeral before the funeral. One night, Augustus' mother calls Hazel late at night to tell her the news. That night, Hazel's parents stay with her. A few days after that, his funeral is held in the same church where the support group meets. When the minister talks about Augustus, he uses cancer cliches to talk about how brave he was and how he was an example to everyone. This bothers Hazel. Then she hears a voice whispering that the pastor's message is horse crap. This startles her. She sees that Van Houten is sitting in the chair behind her. Hazel reads her speech at the funeral, which is different from the one she gave at his pre-funeral. She starts with a quote that hangs in Augustus' house, without pain, we couldn't know joy. Van Houten asks Hazel and her parents to give him a ride after the funeral. He says that Augustus kept in touch with him and that Augustus told Van Houten that he had to make up for ruining their trip. He tries to tell Hazel what happened to Anna's mother, but she isn't interested. She already knows what happens after death because Augustus has just died. Isaac tells Hazel a few days after the funeral that Augustus was working on a companion to an imperial affliction for her. Hazel tries to go to Augustus' house to find the letter, but Van Houten, who is sitting in the back seat, scares her again. He says he wants to say sorry and that Hazel reminds him of his daughter Anna, who was only eight years old when she died of cancer. Hazel tells Van Houten to stop drinking and get back to writing. Hazel finds out in the end that Augustus tore the pages out of his notebook and sent them to Van Houten so that he could use them to write an obituary about Hazel. Hazel gets the pages back from Van Houten. The book ends with what Augustus says. Hazel opens the letter and reads what it says. It says that we will all get hurt, but we can choose who hurts us. In the end of his message, he says that he is happy with his choice and hopes that Hazel is happy with hers as well. Hazel says she does in the last line of the story. About the author. Green was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. Green's parents went to Orlando, Florida, as soon as he was born. 
He went to Indian Springs School, a private school near Birmingham, Alabama, when he was a child. After that, he went to Kenyon College and got a double major in English and Religious Studies. He finished in 2000. After Green graduated from Kenyon, he worked in a children's hospital while going to Divinity School to become an Episcopal priest. He never went to Divinity School, though, because working in a hospital with kids who had life-threatening illnesses made him want to be a writer instead. He spent several years in Chicago where he wrote book reviews, wrote for the radio, and worked in publishing. During this time, he wrote his first book, Looking for Alaska, 2005, which was a huge hit right away and kept getting bigger. He then wrote An Abundance of Catherines, 2006, Paper Towns, 2008, and The Fault in Our Stars, 2012, which was the number one best-selling book for kids on the New York Times list. Green lives with his wife and two kids in Indianapolis, where he continues to write, make videos, and talk in public about a wide range of themes. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.